Hello and welcome back to another CM Travels video. It's wonderful to have you with me here today. My name is Murray Forbes. Today we're going to be talking about these two lenses. The 500mm f4 fl and the 400mm f2.8 fl. Which one's better? Which one's faster? Which one should you put in your bag? First, let's cue that intro. just want to quickly mention that this channel is not sponsored by Nikon. They very kindly send me their gear to test out and give you my honest opinion and reviews on their gear before I send it back to them. If you would like to help the channel out, please feel free to use the affiliate links down below. The first one to artless.io where you can get amazing music for all of your YouTube videos or your own personal use today. Two months free on the house, you're welcome, by using that link. And if you want 15% off any small rig gear, go ahead and hit that link as well. Thank you so, so much. Of course, the other way to help, which is also completely free and is an absolutely massive help to us, is by hitting the subscribe button and that like button if you enjoy today's content. Let's now take a deep dive into what I found out of using these two lenses. This was the first image that, or one of the first images that I took with the 400mm f2.8 the light was already very harsh but as you can see going in here the quality of the lens is absolutely superb very sharp very good um, i haven't developed it at all so this is straight out of the camera and uh, it's a beautiful little image what i wanted to illustrate here was a bit of the foreground and a bit of the background with the f2.8 this is wide open at f2.8 to try to illustrate this, the theme you will see going forward from here is just how much of a difference the bokeh is from the f4 to the f2.8. So here is our first illustration of just how lovely the f2.8 is. Let's head over to our next image. But again here the f2.8, very nice, very clear. I managed to wait and get Hirsch one of her uh, looking directly at me. This did take a bit of time, by the way. So if you are visiting a zoo, uh, take your time with the animals and hopefully you'll get lucky and they'll move around, which happened with me The you'll see later on in the video. Uh, I do the breakdown of the video quality with these lenses and you'll see what happens. So stay tuned for that. Here is another one. Again, I'm shooting wide open at f2.8 with the 400 mm lens just to show you really what this bokeh here looks like in the background and what it looks like in the foreground. Of course, if we quickly went into the develop, you can see I've put on the highlights to show, to show where it's um, been blown out. So I dropped my exposure a bit. I can drop the highlights a bit. And then there we go. I actually prefer to drop the highlights rather than the um, exposure itself. I think the exposure was great, but a contrast, you know, and you can really add in a bit of things here that would really Sort of make this image pop a little bit more don't miss too much with the blacks in the background you, you can see that this is a jpeg image so i'm not going to make it miss too much but just for your sake to see the images straight out of the camera with the nikon z6 of course really good quality let's have a look now at one of the one with the 500 mil f4 now i don't know why but that f4 this bokeh background i really really enjoy and if you see down here this is taken with the 500 mil these are all the settings but of course i used aperture priority mode when we're shooting at f4 and lovely crisp sharp this is with no added sharpening or anything you can see the little flies here flying around but for me this is what i'm looking at this background and how it looks and to be honest if we go one back I think looks a bit better than that background and certainly better than this background. So we'll keep using the images to illustrate this to you and just show you what they're like. So onto our wonderful little lemurs here in the Moswala um, arena, should we say. This is a little bit 
more difficult because it's very harsh backlighting and it was not so easy to get this guy uh, and the camera did struggle a little bit I think it's just because of the very challenging foreground there's lots of foliage the lighting is not very good at the back so yeah it didn't do too badly here this is uh, an embedded preview so that might be affecting the quality here this is our raw file here just like before so if we went in here and quickly uh, develop and she has already added 40 you can see where i'm losing <laughs> let's just turn that off quickly so you can see that's of course where it's completely white and uh, has no more detail in the white but that's not too bad to be honest i would crop this image anyway probably so yeah this is a beautiful illustration of this beautiful lima up in the trees this one i think is even better and the 500 mil was so much lighter than the 400 f2.8 as you can imagine the gloss is much heavier in the in the 400 millimeter f2.8 but the quality is equally just as good and to be honest as you might have <laughs> seen already i am quite a fan of this um, 500 mil very very nice now i giving you this image here to just bring us back down to earth this little feathered friend of ours wandered across the path in front of me and i tried to quickly swing the 500 mil down and take a quick snap of this bird going across the path because he's quite beautiful and you can forget that um <laughs> not it's not really the camera's fault too much as in that it's it they are heavy lenses and they are not so easy to wield around quickly if you are wielding things around and wanting to take quick images, I would recommend the 7200 or the 300 f4 or f2.8, not this big hunk of glass. Here again, look at this beautiful background. I wish looking back at it that I had actually tried the f2.8 with this particular chameleon because he was just playing really, really nice with us. Beautiful colors. I love the smooth background. This is undeveloped. Okay, now it's developed. If we go back to the library setting, there you go. That's undeveloped straight out of the camera, which is very, very good. Um, there's a little, what I can see here to be, I think, some lens flare, which is interesting. I don't think there's uh, continued lens flare. There we go. There Now there's, I was obviously catching a bit of the light there. But look at this beautiful shadow depth field. This, is, of course, is at F4. So... Oh man, just absolutely magic and beautiful colors. As I say, unedited straight out of the camera, which is, to be fairly honest, pretty good. Um, I was very happy with this and the 500 mil just kept blowing me away. This is now trying to hand hold the hand hold rather the 500 mil f4 much more difficult, even though it is lighter than the 400 it's still very, very tough. And because of this foliage in front of the chameleon and the challenging backlighting, it meant that I had to use the small box focus thing. And it was very, very difficult. It was not easy to handhold and keep the lens steady enough to get nice clear shots in quite dark settings. Just to keep that in mind, because I have seen other videos that saying that the 500 FL is can be handheld and I would... Say no to that okay moving on here we go we have the 400 millimeter with the two times tele converter remember i'm using the ftz adapter to the z6 and pretty fantastic quality all around again the f5.6 you get still get a beautiful bokeh here i still prefer the f4 as you probably will have seen on my other images i, I or on my other comments rather in other videos the F4 is just such a sweet point for wildlife photography, which I really enjoy. This is the kind of bokeh here. Um, I actually took this completely by accident because the camera lost focus and I just snapped quickly. Um, and it's still, look, it, it's beautiful and smooth. The bokeh here is still at F5.6. The quality of the glass in these, in these lenses is absolutely phenomenal. It's just absolutely superb. I enjoyed every second of it. Thank you, Andy from Nikon again for me now this f 
uh, with the two times telly, you can get really nice and close to these animals and, and really essentially crop it in, but just beautiful, beautiful images. And still look at the foreground here with the foliage, look at the background. Very, very nice still. And this is one of my favorites. Um, what I have been hearing and seeing and my own personal experience using the F mount lenses is oh sorry the new Z or S line lenses with the Z mount is that they are so crazy sharp that it almost looks fake. And heading back to the F mount lenses, we still have this little bit of a dreamy effect. It's not it's sharp but not as sharp as those S line lenses are. So just keep that in mind. I found that very very uh, interesting. Time to look at. The videos. I was impressed with the video on both the lenses, but let's give you the first one here with the 400 millimeter f 2.8. You may remember the line image from before. Beautiful here. Seeing the uh, the two lionesses coming together, saying good morning to one another. I had the Z6 on animal autofocus setting followed very very well first thing of course you notice is that with the such a long zoom length any movement in the video itself is seen so if you need well you will need a good tripod right let's go to the next one this lovely shot of the tiger cleaning herself in the beautiful morning light bit of a slow motion here and I had it again on animal focus tracking and she was beautiful in this light it was a little bit harsh it's now just past nine o'clock in the morning and that morning light unfortunately has just passed the zoo only opens at nine and if you are going to be going to Zurich Zoo anytime soon I definitely recommend going to the predators first if you can, early as you can, because that's when you're going to get them active. I suspect as the day goes on and warms up, you're not going to have as active predators. So as you can see, my first stop was the lions and then the tigers. And then I went on to the hyenas. Unfortunately, I didn't get any good footage of the hyenas. But once I was done with those predators, then I went into the Mozwala section of the zoo. And there it's... I didn't I think if you went there early it will be a good idea because the lemurs are still calling. You'll see coming up a lovely lemur call in a bit. But straight out of the camera, this is beautiful slow motion footage, and I was very impressed. The f2.8 again, like with the images, this background doesn't look so great, uh, if I'm honest. And I preferred that f4 smoothness with the 500 mil you can see here again it's gone out of focus with which i then manually turned the focus back to the tiger which was fairly easy and straightforward to do but if you like me and you're wanting to get the best quality video that you can get the animal focus tracking just wasn't good enough i don't think on the z6 now in this particular video you can see that the focusing does get a bit sketchy a bit iffy and what i had to do was went to went way out as you can see here the focusing is really struggling is to have your hand ready on the focus ring because of course you can just quickly snap into manual focus the highlight peaking comes on automatically if you have it enabled for the manual when you're in manual focus mode of course and that helps out the lens big time but again it's the animal focus speed wasn't and wasn't uh without its imperfections you'll remember the picture of the chameleon this is a lovely video of him just quietly going about his business in the trees look at the smoothness i've now changed over to the 500 mil f4 let me turn down that noise so you can hear me a bit better but the clarity is fantastic here 
there's not as much foliage in the foreground so the camera isn't having to work as much with that autofocus and if we start that again you can see here that it is very crisp very clear and absolutely fantastic beautiful chameleon 500 millimeter for me here wins again um again it's it's not it's not easy to compare it because i was taking different kinds of shots this is a much easier shot than the lima in the tree i have to admit but uh i don't know the it's just that there is something different about this 500 mil that takes it beyond the 400 mil here again we get a moving forward now there it is this is where you know the focusing is not perfect with these long lenses and yeah i would I, of course they stopped recording but it's definitely worth having your hands ready or first locking on the focus to something slow and moving like this chameleon was you don't have to have it you know being on continuous focus mode in order to to capture something that's slow moving that makes no sense so if you are videoing something that is standing relatively still or sitting or doing nothing then definitely have that manual focus on because the lens will search for focus if it if the head moves or the uh, if the eyes move it's gonna really throw out the focus of this lens uh, especially with the z6 i don't know about the z6 II, and if you'd like me to see what the focusing is like using these big lenses the old f mount lenses on the z6 II, do let me know in the comments down below let's move on now i've just put on the two times teleconverter and bang you get that 800 mil length with the 400 f 2.8 lens i did not use the teleconverter on the 500 mil again if you want me to do a video with that please do leave your comment down below and i'll get that in but having the f2 uh, the sorry the two times teleconverter with me you know it really gets you so much closer uh, to the animals particularly if they're quite far away and if i'm honest that f5.6 you see the background here it's very nice and smooth just like the images that we had before and the quality is still very sharp let's have that playing for you here the quality is still very very sharp on the edges i don't see any chromatic aberration or anything like that this is the third version of the uh, two times teleconverter so it's the best out there and i was very happy very impressed with the with it um, and would definitely recommend using it for video here is a close-up of a chameleon you can see now i have loosened the, the the stability of the tripod head and that just little bit of movement with this two times tele you can forget keeping it stable so keep that in mind i wish here you'll see i actually move with the chameleon and to be fair i wish i hadn't moved i'd wish i just stayed in one place so for future reference for those video uh, videographers out there always stay in one place and let the animal move out of frame i was also using the tracking box mode so i quickly pressed the ok button in the middle of the dials in the middle snapped it onto the eye and waited for that to follow the focus you can see as he goes behind the leaf here that it stays on the chameleon's body it doesn't follow him through it would of course then focus on this front leaf so kudos there the auto focusing with that tracking box is very good if you can quickly snap and get it onto what you want to focus on um, and it's a very good idea as well uh, another option rather than having to manually focus while you're going here the jacana beautiful little um, bird beautiful little reflection going here and here i had it just on animal focus so it was keeping very good focus on the water another thing i did here of course is use that box again and this is with the two times teleconverter on quality and crisp sharp image is superb uh, just as if you had the just without the the two times telly but with the two times telly it gets it nice and close and in on your subject okay so firstly when using these two lenses you need a tripod both for the stills and of course for video as well i will show you now a little video here in the corner of exactly the tripod i used with this big gimbal head and while it was cumbersome to carry around it really made a huge huge difference if you can't get hold of something like that a monopod anything 
that you can use to stabilize your lens like the child your child's head perhaps or a friend's shoulder whatever you need to use in order to stabilize these big lenses do it it's well worth it one of the most crucial points to these two lenses was of course that f-stop now the f2.8 to me sounds way more attractive i don't know it's because it's i've been marketed that for my whole life but when reviewing the images the f4 oh the quality and i don't know if it's the quality but just that look of the background bokeh here was superb i will admit however that when i put the two times teleconverter on the 400 millimeter and that pushed it up to f 5.6 got that very similar same look so my initial reaction is go for the 500 it's lighter uh, the f-stop and the look is superb the quality is amazing over the f uh, 2.8 because it's it's uh, i don't know exactly how much heavier it is but it is it seems way more heavier and after a okay a half day at the zoo from nine till half past one two o'clock carrying them both around in my backpack my shoulders were dead um and that probably doesn't even weigh that much but just using them lifting them up putting them on the tripod moving them around taking them off the tripod constantly screwing and unscrewing the little um uh, floor that goes that you put onto the lens mount that then goes onto the tripod all of that stuff with big heavy lenses is not so easy if you're one person even with two i think you'd struggle as well but bear that in mind these are big lenses i showed you that picture of the bird just running across the path those sorts of photos you can't get basically you set yourself up you get the camera ready you put it on the right settings then you take your cat then you take the photo or the video or whatever it is and sometimes you don't have that option so if i was going on a trip what i would do personally is yes take one of these big lenses absolutely have it already attached to a body and have a second body for your shorter zoom lengths your 24 to 70 or your 70 to 200 or something like that so you can quickly get that out and take quick pics if there's movement moving around now i was slightly disappointed with the z6 animal focus mode it did struggle in that mozwala like um area and uh, it there's a few things it 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 is dark in that in that in that space and a lot of backlight and of course a lot of foliage in the foreground and really that's how i would be using the lenses out in the costa rica jungle for example you know you do have foliage you have humidity by the way it took 15 minutes for the lenses to de-steam when i went from what was it maybe 16 70 degrees outside into that mozwala i don't know what you'd call it i don't know if it's an area or a, like a, a big pen or whatever it is but anyway the whole lens missed it up i'll show you it put a little photograph of a bird a beautiful tanager i think it was a tanager and uh yeah my i don't know i was like why is this not looking sharp and good my whole lens had of course fogged up completely so if you're going to be using these big lenses in jungles and so on just remember to take along a, a, a lens cloth to wipe any fog that might happen on them but in my honest opinion of using the lenses i have to say personally i would go with the 500 and that's just because i like the look of that f4 um what i think i will do is give the 200 uh, the 400 f 2.8 a chance at the f4 focal length um and take it out and use it and see what kind of back looks i or back bokeh i can get with it i haven't i did not get a chance to use the two times teleconverter on the 500 mil so perhaps that an option if you would like me to do that as i mentioned before leave it in the comments down below thank you so much for joining me here today and i'll see you in the next one bye bye Thank you.